I'm back here at the NRA National Farms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia, here at NRA headquarters with Jim Zapika, director of the NRA Museums. And Jim, doing special Curator's Corner series here on Sportsman Channel. You had a chance to get out to Raton, to that jewel out there, the NRA Whittington Center, and visit the museum out there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you were doing out there. Well, this is the Frank Brownell Museum of the Southwest. It's one of the three museums in the NRA Museum system. I don't get out there as often as I'd like to. I love it out there. They've got beautiful exhibits. Uh, and one of the themes of this museum, as you might guess, is the history of the American Southwest. And of course, you have this incredibly colorful era, uh, close association with America's Old West uh, and the Mountain Man era. And that's uh, that's what we're going to take a little look at today. Yeah, you got to talk to Wayne Armacost about that. And, and tell everybody before we go to it, there's a great museum out there, but there's so much to the Whittington Center. The Whittington Center is an incredible facility for shooters, uh, NRA members, hunters. They have wonderful ranges there that are open to the public. They have a number of uh, uh, national, international, local competitions. Uh, there are hunting opportunities. And as a, a, a benefit, when you're out there, you get to go through the uh, Frank Brownell Museum of the Southwest and see these way cool guns. Awesome. And you'll meet Wayne Armacost. He is the glue that holds that place together when you get out there and say hi to him. You said hi to him and talked about the last of the mountain men. So interesting segment here. Yeah. We not only have a firearm, but a, a really nice knife as well. So I take, love the historical stuff. Take a look. Wayne, the Whittington Center, the Frank Brownell Museum of the Southwest here tells the story of the American Southwest, an incredible story uh, going back centuries through some of the most colorful eras of American history. And certainly one of those is the uh, story of the mountain man. It is the, the mountain men, uh, you know, often maybe misunderstood, yeah. you know, the, the loner, the self-proclaimed loner that, that uh, roamed the woods, but uh, a very important part of, of our history. It did a lot of trapping, um, did a lot of uh, things of exploring, uh, really responsible for, you know, arguably maybe settling some of the wild parts of the West, being the first one to go in and, and explore the areas. And in fact, the Whittington Center hosts the Mountain Man Rendezvous every oh, that's year. Cool. It's the longest running event at the center. This those, are, those are fun guys. Those are the buck skinners, right? I mean, they come dressed in the costumes. They've got the fringe. They've, yes. got, the, they've got the guns. They live the life. Uh, it's about as much fun as you can have as a grown-up, right? It, it, you know, it, it seems that way. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It really does. Well, these guys, they were, they were trappers. They were hunters. They were feeding this incredible demand for beaver pelts. Mm -hmm. Beaver hats were a fad back east, and, and uh, it required the pelts, uh, and they were coming by singles or two into unknown territories. They were working for some of the big fur companies sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd be, hold the rendezvous to, to bring in their skins and trade for wares and uh, have a social time. And uh, they brought with them a new type of gun. Now, most people have heard of the Kentucky rifle, probably better called the American long rifle. And that was really the first American rifle. It was developed when the American frontier was Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, and it was a, a very unique gun, a very long gun, relatively small caliber, uh, very graceful artistic droop stock. But as the uh, uh, American West became the Great Plains, the Southwest, the Rocky Mountains, a different type of gun was needed. And it was the Plains rifle uh, configuration. And we've got a nice, uh, a nice gun in that configuration. Uh, shows some honest use. This gun has been there. It's been used hard. It's been repaired. But uh, some of the uh, features that would differentiate it uh, from a Kentucky-style rifle, first of all, would be the short half stock. Mm -hmm. Kentucky rifle would be full stock to a muzzle. Now, this one actually has kind of a long barrel for a, a Plains rifle, but that would be another feature. The barrel became shorter than on the very long barrel Kentucky. And uh, uh, the caliber also became very large. Uh, you had the bigger game here in the West. You right. had the bison, you had the elk, you had the big bears out here. Right. And uh, these, uh, these squirrel rifles and deer rifles that were good for the eastern forests uh, didn't cut it when you got out here. So uh, uh, the mountain men uh, coming into St. Louis would, uh, would uh, pick up uh, one of these guns by the famous makers there, the Hawkins, uh, uh, Demick, uh, uh, the, uh, the purveyors there of the Plains rifles and uh, bring it with them uh, uh, to the American West. Yep. 
Now you've got a very cool artifact here at the museum. This, uh, uh, this is from the last of the mountain men. It truly is. His name was Ben Lilly, and uh, anyone that, that knows anything about either mountain lion hunting or a mountain man will recognize the name of, of Ben Lilly. He was uh, born in Alabama in uh, 1856 and um, started to make his way out this way, and he was um, really notorious uh, for, for, for mountain lions. Um, he's even been known to dispatch a uh, bear and lions with a homemade bowie knife, may maybe similar to, to this. Wow. This is a really interesting story around, around this knife. Um, George Whittington, who the Whittington Center is named after, okay. was a young boy and visiting a, a ranch with his father, and uh, Ben Lilly was there. And uh, he got to spend a week around the famous mountain man. Um, you know, so famous that uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, used Ben Lilly as a guide when he hunted out in, wow. in the West. So this is no just ordinary man that George yeah. Whitt young George Whittington was hanging around yeah. with. And he you know, just, just was enamored by the stories that, that Ben had to tell. And um, you know, Ben was uh, used to living on his own. He didn't smell good. He was not really somebody you'd want to hang around with. But the stories he had to tell were uh, captivating. And you know, you'd get past the smell to, to be around him, you know, George would, would say. But uh, when, when uh, George's father said, you know, it's time to go, pack up, uh, Ben pulled this out of his belt and handed it to young George. And um, uh, we even have an affidavit here in the museum talking about the story and about how George Whittington came about this knife. And uh, we almost lost this knife. It was rolled up in the affidavit in a paper towel tube. Oh my and we, gosh. we were doing some cleaning up, and, <laughs> and that paper towel tube felt awful oh. heavy. And out we slid uh, this knife and, and the affidavit. So uh, it's on display here in the Frank Brunel Museum of the Southwest. And that's incredible. Uh, these are the artifacts that really work for me, the ones that are true pieces of history, uh, someone uh, who saw so much history, made so much history, and the artifacts that they were actually using uh, as part of their daily lives. Right. That's incredible. So we've seen the early mountain men, we've seen the last of the real mountain men, and then you got one other, uh, one other mountain man gun here. Uh, this is a ma mountain man gun uh, used by Charlton Heston in the movie The Mountain Men. That's right. And uh, it's, a, it's a very well used old gun, but it's the right configuration. You can see it's the half stock. It's got the, the shorter barrel, uh, very much like the kind of gun The Mountain Men uh, would have used. Uh, now, there are a few of these guns floating around because there's one scene in the movie where they've got a bunch of guns loaded for a fight and they're just shooting one after another. But this is incredible to have uh, 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 this Hollywood gun here. Uh, we'll, uh, we, we show Hollywood guns at all three of the museums, the uh, Frank Brownell Museum of the ha Southwest. There's the uh, NRA National Firearms Museum at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia has a, a very large Hollywood gun very section. Very well done, too. Oh, it's cool, isn't it? Yes, there's it cool is. stuff there. And then there's the uh, brand new NRA National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri, and it's got a nice uh, Hollywood guns that section there that focuses kind of on uh, uh, guns of the Westerns. Absolutely. So uh, they're a lot of fun. Everybody enjoys those. Uh, I really appreciate you having us out here. People who want to see more firearms history can visit us at nramuseums.com or come out to your NRA Whittington Center, shoot, see the museum, compete, learn, have a great time.